This time around, we're going to make something a little bit different. We're going to make kombucha or fermented tea. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now then, before proceeding, I'd like to give a special shout out to Leah Lockett-Harris for helping support this channel by selecting one of our channel memberships. Leah, thank you. Now to make our kombucha, we need the following items. We need something about one quarter or larger container or jar to do the fermentation in. We need our SCOBY starter. We need anywhere from four to six cups of water, that's one liter or above. We're gonna need about a quarter of a cup of sugar, two tea bags, something, a tight weave cloth or a coffee filter to cover it with, and a rubber band to secure it. What we wanna do here is that we want to bring our filtered water to boil. We're going to add that to the pot. Let's go ahead and give that a cover. Let's go ahead and turn on the heat. And wait for it to come to a boil. Now that our water has come to a nice good boil, we can go ahead and turn off the heat. And we can drop in our tea bags. And we want to let that we want to let that come down to a nice warm temperature, and then we're going to go ahead and add our sugar. While the tea continues to cool down, let's go ahead and add that sugar, and let's go ahead and stir that in. Let this come down to room temperature. The tea has come down to room temperature. I don't mean that it's slightly warm or it's, you know, kind of cool. It has definitely come down to room temperature. So we're going to go ahead and add that to our fermenting jar. And following that, we are going to add our SCOBY. Hmm, without making a mess. Well, I can see it now, this is gonna drip. So let me cut a little corner and pour off enough of it. I can open up the rest of the bag without it going all over the place. All right. Yeah, there we go. All right. Basically, all we need to do now is cover it up again with either a cotton towel, tight fitting cotton towel, or in my case, I'm going to use paper coffee filter. You say you want to let the mixture be able to breathe a little bit. Okay. All right. All we need to do now is put that in a nice dark place. All right, for the next five to seven days, put it somewhere where it's going to be nice and dark. Let it do its thing. We'll come back and check it out. This is what our kombucha looked like when we start. It's a nice, relatively dark color. And now, after six days, 
this is what a kombucha looks like. It's gotten a lot lighter. Also, our original SCOBY is still floating down at the bottom. But we also have a new SCOBY that was floating on the top until I started moving the, moving the jar around. And now it's sitting down at the bottom as well. So, that's where we stand. Let's go ahead and start doing second fermentation on this bad boy. All right, to add flavorings to this kombucha, I've decided to use two different flavorings. One, I've got some very sweetened cranberry juice. And for the other, I'm going to be using strawberries. Let's go ahead and chop up these strawberries. This big fat one. And as for the other one, this one looks a little bit simpler and a whole lot easier. All right, that's that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to fill up these bottles. And seeing as how my scobies are floating down at the bottom of the container, I could simply just put in a funnel and start filling it that way. But seeing as how this is primarily a wine making channel, and I'm going to have, of course, some winemaking implements. I'm going to be using my racking cane to get all of this kombucha floating above the scobies. And let me back up just a little bit. And up. All right. And our strawberries. And I want to be mindful because I want to save about anywhere from a cup to half a cup of this tea. Just in case I want to make another batch. Okay, now with the cranberry, because that was a very sweetened cranberry juice that I put in there, it's almost like a light syrup, I'm just going to go ahead and cap that. As for the strawberries, I'm going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of sugar to help get that secondary fermentation a, a start. We'll go ahead and cap that. All right. Next thing I want to do is give it another five days sitting on the counter or back in the cabinet where, where it started and go ahead and let fermentation start. Secondary fermentation start. See if we can get uh, some good carbonation going. After that, we'll put it in the refrigerator for about a day or so. And then we'll come back and do a, a tasting. Let's just see if this is uh, something that I want to make again, or if this is an acquired taste that I might want to think about acquiring that taste before I make it again. So there we go. Before I forget, since I've got everything already set up, we need to do something about this 
old and new SCOBY that we've got going here. So I'm going to don't have any more glass containers and I need this for something else. So we're going to go ahead and transfer our new SCOBY and our old SCOBY. That's close to a cup. So if I want to, if I do want to make this again, this is my starter. I could just cover this up with a um, with a tight weave cloth, or if I can get it to fit, another uh, coffee filter. But I don't need to put this on tight. This can be on there rather loosely. I just want to keep out bugs and dust, so they say. So there we go. We've got secondary fermentation in process and our starter for another batch already set aside. Okay, from secondary fermentation has now been complete. I gave it six days and another day sitting in the refrigerator. This was the uh, strawberry one that I made and if you recall a few moments ago, I didn't give it a whole great deal of headspace because I didn't have that much left over. Uh, I figure strawberry is probably a safer bet than the cranberry, even though they both should be good if you're into kombucha. But this is my first time trying it, so I don't know what it's, what it's really going to taste like. If it's going to taste like something I want to make again or, or not, you know. So let's just go ahead and see what happens. Okay, <laughs> definitely got carbonation. <laughs> I guess that's a good sign. Hmm. I mean, on the whole, from, this, from the initial smell, it's not. It's not all that sweet. I mean, I could, I could smell the strawberries in there, but it's got kind of a slightly acidic or or, or vinegar-like smell to it. I didn't make vinegar, but I guess that's part of the allure of kombucha. Mine's not overly fizzy in, in the glass. It's definitely got a strong strawberry smell to it. All right, here's to you. Surprising. Hmm, that's an interesting combination. It's it's sweet, which I didn't think it would be. You don't taste the uh, you don't taste the acidity at all. Nope, not at all. It definitely has a mouthfeel to it. I mean, it's not it's not thin, but then again, it's not it's not thick, so it's not syrup or anything like that. It's got a tiny little acidic bite at the very end. I mean, I was surprised because during primary fermentation, <laughs> I didn't think this was something I was going to drink. But no, strawberry's not bad. That's not too bad at all. Is it a reason for me to hang on to my scobies? 
I would say probably, yeah. I mean, now that the Scobies have been bought and paid for, and well, the Scobie has been bought and paid for, and it's now making little Scobies every time I make it, I think I'm going to keep my Scobies alive. I mean, I only need one because I'm not going to make but a quarter at a time. So if I can keep it going, keep feeding it uh, from time to time that I do make it, because, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not something that I'm going to be making every week. I might make it later once a month or so, and if I can keep it keep it refrigerated for a period of length of time after secondary fermentation, so I can have like a bottle or something on hand when there's nothing else to drink uh, in the house, in the apartment, then yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with all the little scobies that, I'll be, <laughs> that are going to end up happening. Uh, give them away, I guess. Uh, but, hmm. Yeah, put this over ice. This is not, not too bad. So, I'm not gonna finish this yet. Unlike wine, I don't think I need to finish the entire bottle in one setting. Put this back in the refrigerator. Uh, probably crack open that cranberry one, see what that tastes like. Um, but yeah, something simple, relatively cheap. Once you've got once you've gotten the initial expense out of the way, I think I pay what? $7 for the original SCOBY, I think it was that. Uh, and you can keep using it for five or six times before you, you have to uh, get, I guess, discard the original SCOBY, but by then, five or six times, you've got five or six little SCOBYs that uh, have been created each time you make it. Hmm. Yeah, it's not too bad. I now see why there are dedicated YouTube channels just on making uh, kumba, kombucha. <laughs> Mine's not one of them, but uh, uh, I now see the allure. Again, followed uh, with the instructions that they gave, followed the instructions that came with the uh, SCOBY, uh, did all the research. Uh, I can now see why it's probably, you know, kind of expensive in the grocery store, but if you can make it your own, Yeah, I can deal with that. That's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. I'll give it. Uh, I'll give it a, a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, but definitely something I see. I can see myself making making it again. Of course, at the time of this video, this is a uh, winter time, so I'm not drinking a whole lot of cold drinks. Uh, but for uh, summertime refreshment, sure, it's better than pop. No doubt about it. So there you go. My first effort at making a kombucha. Uh, we'll see what happens next on this, on this channel.